To give you an idea of what to expect in this course, let me walk through the sessions with you and let you know what we have in store for you. In session one, I'm going to be talking with you about the traits of narcissism. Now, narcissism is something that's readily defined, and I'm going to pinpoint eight different ingredients that are commonly seen and observed when you're dealing with someone of this nature. In session two, we're going to up the ante, and I'm going to talk with you about malignant narcissism. Now, when we talk about malignant narcissism, we're talking about someone who's gone down that spectrum of this personality disorder in such a way that it actually becomes their goal to just grind you into a position of nothingness. Now, don't be alarmed because I'm also going to give you some tools so that you can know how to respond in the most favorable way to that malignant narcissism. In session three, we're going to talk about your responses to narcissistic control. Let's keep in mind that one of the primary things a narcissist wish to, wishes to have is control over you. And as we discuss how that person goes about accomplishing that, we're going to also talk about some of the counter strategies that you can have so that that doesn't happen. And instead, you'll have the freedom to decide for yourself the values that you're going to live according to. In session four, we're going to be talking about an odd disadvantage you have with the narcissist. Now, that seems a little strange to put it that way, but I assume that most of you who are dealing with somebody that has a strong narcissistic bent try to get that person to think in a normal fashion. And that's because you try to think like a normal person. And that's what I refer to as the odd disadvantage when you're dealing with that individual because, you see, the more you try to get them to think normally, then you're just setting yourself up for an awful lot of hurt because that individual cannot and will not think normally in reverse towards you. And so we're going to be talking about how to reposition the way that you think and reposition the way that you communicate with that person so that your normalcy works for you, not against you. In the fifth session, we're going to discuss the anger generated inside you by the narcissist. Now, let's keep in mind that anger in and of itself doesn't necessarily have to be a bad emotion, although many times when you respond with that anger, it can take you to a pretty dark place. And so in this session, we're going to discuss the difference between unhealthy and healthy anger responses so that you can respond to that individual in such a way that allows you to stay on the course of goodness that you know that you need to be on. In session six, we're going to talk about insecurity with a narcissist. Now, interestingly, it's the narcissist, although they won't admit it, who has the deepest level of insecurity. But what they want to do is they want to make you feel like the one who's inadequate, and it can leave you feeling very defensive, and it can leave you feeling like you have to walk on eggshells because you're never quite sure what you're supposed to say, think, or do in response to that person's mandates. But we'll be discussing how you can reestablish your mindset in such a way that allows you to uh, respond in a way that's secure and confident rather than groveling in a sense of defensiveness and uh, inner insecurity. In the seventh session, we're going to talk about guilt trips created by the narcissist. You see, that narcissistic individual would love nothing more than to keep you in a position of shame and inadequacy, and we're going to discuss some of the do's and don'ts so that the guilt that that person may be putting on you doesn't just rob you of your inner character, but instead that you can live according to what you know is wisest and best, and rather than living with guilt, you can live with a sense that says, I'm able to take feedback, I'm able to listen to other individuals, but to do so in such a way that allows me to thrive and to shine rather than uh, allowing yourself to stay stuck in some sort of rut of emotional duress. Now, in the eighth session, we're going to be talking about staying true to yourself. You can tell by the comments that I've made about the other sessions that that's, this is a powerful theme that I have. Too many times when you're dealing with a narcissist, you may feel required to go into a people-pleasing or an appeasement kind of mode to the extent that you're not really being honest about who you are. Well, we're going to establish what an honest you looks like and sounds like and acts like, and then you're going to have the confidence to go forward with those kinds of ingredients fully in place. In session nine, we're going to grapple with the question, 
why do some people gravitate toward the narcissist? Now, the gist of the answer that we're going to discuss is you know, sometimes people are, are not really willing to listen to their own inner voice. When they know that something is not right or this is not a good way to live, they somehow or another allow themselves to be talked out of their good direction. Well, we're going to listen to what that inner voice has to say. And in this session, I'm going to walk you through various thoughts and ideas that can get you to the place of saying, you know what? If this is me thinking this, and if this is me trying to come up with what I believe to be a, a better alternative, we need to listen to that as opposed to just dropping what you think and allowing yourself to become somebody that you're not. That's not going to be good for you. We have a much better way for you to manage that. In session 10, we're going to talk about what to avoid with the narcissist. Now, specifically in this session, I'm going to talk with you about the gamey style that the narcissist wants to engage with you, and inadvertently, you may wind up playing the very games that you don't like. And we're going to talk about some of the particulars of that, but specifically, we're going to talk about how you can recognize some of the temptations to go into a foul way of interacting, and then you can identify the much cleaner ways of, of interacting with that person so that, again, you can stay true to what your boundaries to say that needs to be done, as opposed to allowing somebody else to just bring out the very worst in you. Session 11 delves into the question, is there such a thing as healthy narcissism? Now, I'm going to go ahead and give you a hint. The short answer to that question is no. When people talk about the possibility of healthy narcissism, they're operating from a misinformed position. So in this session, I'm going to be talking about a healthy self-esteem. And we're going to line out what healthy self-esteem looks like so that you can differentiate who you want to be as compared to that narcissistic pattern that takes you in very much in the wrong direction. The more you have your eyes on really good principles and values that are going to work for you, then the more you're going to walk away with a sense of confidence that says, I know what I'm doing, I know what I'm doing is right, and no one's going to dissuade me from that path. The 12th session is entitled, Tension Means Growth Opportunity. Now, when you've been living with someone who really uh, presented themselves in the beginning as a pretty nice individual, only to find later on that there was a whole lot of that narcissism there, then it can bring out a, a great deal of hurt or disillusionment and futility. Well, we're going to look at some of that hurt and some of that pain and ask, what's it trying to teach you? And in this last session, I'm going to talk with you about five primary principles that you can build your life upon so that you can take the difficulty that you've been through and then use it for some primary growth in your life. Uh, at the end of all of this, I'm hoping that you're going to be able to live a life according to what you know is wisest and best. Now, there is one key component to this course that I want you to take full advantage of. And that is, at the end of each session, you're going to notice a segment called Let's Talk. And it's going to be very important for you to take the questions that are given to you in the Let's Talk series and answer them for yourselves. Because when you're dealing with narcissism, one of the primary things that you want to learn to do is to think for yourself. And the questions are going to allow you to claim ownership to the tools and principles given to you so that you can stay steady on the path that's in front of you. As I've mentioned to you previously, I've talked with many people in my counseling office about the subject that we've been discussing in this class. And just know that like my work with them, as I present this information to you through this unique source, know that I'm pulling for you. And I know that as you take the tools and principles that have been given to you, there's no reason that you can't go forward without a sense of real good confidence. I'm hoping that this is something that's been stimulating to you, and I hope this is something that you gain a great deal of confidence from as you move forward, knowing that there are ways to deal with a difficult person in such a fashion that you allow yourself to remain true to who you are. So, let's get started. <music>